How do they differ yeah. with the incarnation? Yeah, absolutely, Paul. Uh, when it comes to the incarnation of Jesus, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that when Jesus was born, he was just a human and not God in human flesh. So obviously that's a major, major difference to Christianity. Mm, Christians strange. believe that in Jesus lives all the fullness of God in human body. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep this one brief. You'll be pleased to know, because let's talk about this uh, in sort of uh, later on uh, as we go through this, because I'm trying to keep this as brief, brief as I can, because some major things we want to discuss later on. Mm. We can include those things. Uh, the resurrection is different. When it comes to the resurrection, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Jesus was resurrected from the dead, but only spiritually, not physically. Right now, although Jehovah's Witnesses celebrate Jesus' death, they don't celebrate his resurrection. Right? It's, we celebrate Jesus' resurrection every Sunday. Right? When we go to church, we celebrate that. Effectively, I mean, I know we do it once a year officially, but effectively, the first day of the week is the Lord's day, and that's because he resurrected on that day. Right? Yeah. They say that since Jesus was resurrected in a spirit body instead of a human body, it means when he comes back, he comes back as a spirit creature, not in flesh. Now, according to the Watchtower, 1953, I've got the pages, the details. I'm going to read it. Um, uh, the body of Jesus, this is going to surprise you, I think. The body of Jesus was disposed of by Jehovah God, dissolved into its con constituent elements or atoms. It was dissolved, disintegrated back into the elements from which all human bodies are made. So they have it. The body of Jesus uh, just melted away. That's why it was not in the tomb. Well, how else would you explain that? My. That's why you couldn't find this body anywhere. Now, according to uh, Russell's six volume set of books called The Studies of Scriptures, we keep pointing out, in volume five, it says, the man Jesus is dead, forever dead. So Jesus did rise from the dead, but not as a human man. His humanity is dead and gone forever, and his body just disappeared. Now, Christians obviously don't believe this. We believe that Jesus originally, uh, or original body, rose from the dead, uh, but obviously glorified. That's because the Bible is not silent on the subject. It tells us clearly, it tells us that he rose from the dead physically. We can see this in many verses, like in John 2, verse 19 and, and 21. Uh, let me read those because it, it will really help. Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. Now, we, we're familiar with that verse. In verse 21, it says, but he was speaking of the temple of his body, right? Jesus was obviously talking about his own body, the very body that will they will destroy. He will raise up in three days. I mean, it won't be much of a resurrection of his body like he claimed if, it was, if he rose spiritually, right? It just wouldn't make sense. After his resurrection, other things happened that proves Jesus rose in his body. For example, in John 20, verses 25 to 28, we have Thomas doubting Jesus, right? He said, we all know the story. He said he won't believe until he puts his own finger in the very holes that, and, uh, that the nails made in Jesus' body. Hmm. If you ever needed a verse to prove that Jesus was resurrected in his original body, this is the kind of verse you want, right? You want this kind of doubt. You want somebody to be doubting just like this. So what happened when Jesus showed up? Well, we all know what happened. Jesus showed up in his spiritual body and Thomas was disappointed because he couldn't touch Jesus with his finger because everyone knows that you can't touch spiritual bodies, right? Is that what happened? No. Nope. No, that's exactly the opposite of what happened. He, what happened is that Jesus showed up just as you would expect him to with his actual physical body. Now, let me read verses 26 and 28. This is, this is important, right? Let me just read it. And after eight days, his disciples were again, in, were again inside, and Thomas with them, Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. There's a reason why I read that, because this is so multiple times a disaster for the, for the JW. So first of all, Thomas said, I won't believe until I touch the same body that Jesus was crucified in and feel the very same wounds Jesus had from the crucifixion, right? And how did Thomas respond? He said, oh, my Lord and my God. You know why? Because only God can do what Jesus did, yeah. right? And, and why, why did Jesus say, do not be the unbelieving, right? Why would he say that if he just brought up a body that was not his original body, right? Mm -hmm. 
Now, what's amazing here? What's amazing here? I have to tell you this because some, when you talk to JW, somebody's going to do this. Is that the JW.org website actually says that Jesus temporarily put on a body for that incident only and other incidents where he showed up with his wound marks. They say Jesus did this to bolster Thomas' faith. Wow. I have so many problems with that, right? Are you ready? I, I really have to, I have to sort of give you all the list of silliness out of this. Now, first of all, it means that Jesus was able to be resurrected in human body, right? Isn't that true? Yeah. If he was able to do why didn't he do it, right? And be consistent with the rest of the Bible, right? And accept that Jesus was resurrected in his original human body. It sounds impressive to me, right? If that, if that impressed Thomas, it would have been impressive to everybody else. Why say Jesus couldn't have resurrected in his body and then claim that he did have a body, or at least for that appearance? Why not just accept that he was resurrected in his body in the first place? Why limit what God can do? Isn't it more glorifying to God to do what he said he will do? Secondly, if we accept the interpreta interpretation that JWs give us for this passage, then it means that Jesus is a liar and a deceiver. Yep. That's because Jesus took on a fake body and pretended it was his own and completely fabricated the whole thing to make Thomas think that he was resurrected in his body. Why does Jesus appease Thomas in this way? What's, what's so special about Thomas? Why not yeah. just say, hey, I'm in spirit. I, 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 the, the, I am in spirit. Uh, and he really, it, by, by changing into his body, it means that Jesus basically is being deceitful about what, he really hap what really happened to him, right? So he's yeah. presenting himself in a way that is not uh, the, the true uh, being of Jesus. Hmm. All right. Now, the other thing that I find very silly is that it also proves that Jesus is God um, because Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Yeah. Right? That's the very statement that said, the very thing that they're denying. Now, I know some JWs uh, that say that Thomas didn't actually call Jesus God. They say that Thomas looked into heaven when he said, my God. But that can't be right because the Bible says Thomas said to him. Hmm. Right? Thomas was talking to Jesus, not to God or heaven. And, and other JWs would say, which is more weird, well, Thomas just slipped up and blasphemed because he was so <laughs> surprised, he shocked, he was shocked, then he saw Jesus in flesh, it just, it just came out, it just came out. Well, first of all, it sounds like an impressive thing that he saw him in his body, <laughs> why not stick to that miracle? But if that was the case and he was blaspheming, well, then why didn't Jesus rebuke him, right? Why didn't he tell him off? That means not only is Jesus as a deceitful, lying archangel, but he's also ungodly and immoral for letting Thomas get away with the worst possible foul language a Jew could ever speak without rebuking him. He rebuked others for far less, right? In yeah, fact, and, and blasphemy yeah. was uh, punishable by stoning. Oh, exactly. If, if Thomas was really blaspheming and Jesus was okay with it, you could actually argue from this verse alone that Jesus doesn't mind his followers going around blaspheming and using foul language that would normally be un would be normally punishable by death in the Jewish culture, right? Absolutely. Anyway, this gets interesting now. Here is the side note that I want to make. So, um, if you meet with a JW and you only had a few minutes to talk to this guy, I want you to remember those four questions. These are really good questions to ask. So, if anybody wants to write this down, it's being recorded. So, pause and write. Ask them, do you believe the Bible is the Word of God? They'll obviously say yes. Tell them, hey, good, because I do too. Then ask them, do you think we should believe everything that God's Word teaches? They'll say, of course, yes. Well, tell them, great, we agree on that one too. Then say, do you believe that disciples of Jesus believe Jesus was God? They'll obviously say, no, of course not. Now, at this point, ask them to open the Bible and read John 20, 28. The, 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 the verse we just read about Thomas. Show them how Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. It happens to be the same wording in the New World Translation. So show it in their own Bible. In fact, in the world, uh, New World Translation, it uses the capital G for God. For a Jehovah's Witness, a capital G means Jehovah. Jehovah, yeah. Right? This is where you can tell them, well, Thomas believed Jesus was God. Why don't you? You know, it really stumps the Jehovah's Witness when, when, when you present it that way, it really surprises them. So Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus did not resurrect in the body, it was just a spiritual resurrection. This is 
totally different to what Christians believe. Christians believe that Jesus rose in his original body, albeit glorified. And by the way, for the Jews, resurrection is not considered a spiritual event because they didn't believe in a spiritual resurrection. They believed in a physical Physical. resurrection. So claiming to be resurrected and then say it was a spiritual resurrection means nothing to the Jews. So because the Jews deny his bodily resurrection, then it ultimately means that they are actually denying the resurrection of Christ altogether. Christians have so many good reasons for believing Jesus rose again. So I I, I promise I'll, I'll make this the last point I make on the on the on this resurrection so how do we know because when jesus first appeared to the disciples he literally said touch me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see i have now check this out talk about refuting jehovah's witnesses in one verse it even says the same thing in the new world translation jesus encourages them to touch his bodies and uh, his his hands and feet and said he's not a spirit and he says for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, right? And also Jesus ate food more than once with his disciples. Obviously spirits don't eat food. The disciples even touched him more than once. In fact, in one of those instances, Matthew 28, 9, it says, they came and held him by the feet and did what? Worshipped him. Worshipped him. It says the disciples worshipped him. What's funny is that in the New World Translation, it translates this, translates this word to obey, obeisance, which means something like bowed in respect. So the disciples didn't worship, they bowed in respect. They obviously had to change the translation here because they can't have the disciples worshiping Jesus. But what's funny is that the Greek word here, which is proskunio, is translated correctly everywhere else in the New World Translation when it's used for God, but only changed here because it's referring to Jesus. That's just bad. It's translated that way to keep JWs from finding the truth about Jesus. It's just crazy. There are other parts other important reasons why Jesus must be in the human body, which I'm going to talk about later. But for now, JWs need Jesus to be raised in spirit because it's an important part of his second coming, right? Second coming. Now, are you still awake? Yeah, I'm going to say, so when we look at this, we see that Jehovah Witnesses deny biblical incarnation. They deny biblical crucifixion. They deny biblical resurrection. And they deny the divinity Mm of jesus christ so right just in that alone we know that it is not orthodox christianity it is it is vastly departed from biblical orthodoxy 